Welcome back, Nomi, my homies. Last time we went fishing with our Nomi, the homie. Rob. <laughs> ah, there you go. Mo, yo, he caught a fish. Nice little fighter. Now it's time to fire up the smoker and make some deliciousness. Mmm. Would you look at that? You ready? Let's go. Well, Nomies, before you take your fish and just throw it in the smoker and start a fire and get some smoke going, there's some stuff we got to do first. One, let's make a brine. Two, put the fish in the brine. Three, then we can smoke. So, we got to start out with making the brine. Let's figure out what we're going to need. Get your range here for a second. Stand by. What are we going to need? First of all, we're going to need a pot. About that big of work. Then, go in that pot. Oh, did I tell you what we're making? <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. We're making a teriyaki sauce. Not just any teriyaki sauce. A teriyaki sauce that'll make your tongue fly out your mouth, slap you upside the head. It's true. All right. What else we gonna need? Okay. We got the pot. Teriyaki sauce. Two things. Main ingredients in teriyaki sauce. Uh, a soy. And a sugar. But that's not it. Because you need some other flavorings to go along with that to make it the teriyaki to teriyaki. One of those is this right here. Mirin. Now, if you're not familiar with mirin, from what I understand, it's a yeah, it says right here on the thing, it's a sweet cooking rice seasoning. So sort of like a, a rice wine cooking wine, no alcohol or anything. But anyway, this is key. If you don't have this, there's a couple other things you can use, like regular rice cooking wine or sake. Two other things we gotta bring to the party. We gotta bring some garlic. Ta -da! Ta oh, there it is. Ta -da! Now the reason I'm pulling out these is because this is super mint, super fine. I don't have a food processor to get my garlic to look like that. And even if I did, I don't know if I could get it to look that good. So, we use these. Same thing with ginger. Now, some recipes call for a little bit of spice. You can put some chili peppers in here. I ain't going to do it. I don't like that on my fish. Not this batch, anyway. All right, let me get all this going. Get the stove going. Because this stuff has got to come to at least room temperature before we put it on the fish. And then it's going to be on the fish for 24 hours. Well, 12 to 24. 12's pushing it, 24 is more better. Anyway, we gotta get going. Now, the recipe listed down on the bottoms is for a single batch. I ended up doing a quadruple batch. You make as much as you want to. Depending on how much fishing you got, or whatever you're deciding to teriyaki in, you measure accordingly. Just don't do what I did and realize you should have used a bigger pot. Oh well. Alright, Nomies. Let's see what we're going to be doing here. Take one of our nice, beautiful fillets. And uh, this is probably one Rob did because I butcher these things. Anyway, we're uh, actually smoking some of Rob's fish. We're smoking with our fish. That way I got a bigger batch. Um, and next time he comes in town, he'll pick it up. But he took some fresh stuff home with him too, so he could have some of that. Anyway, what do we do here? We got our bellies on. We took all of our bones out of here. Now, because I am going to be can processing this in the pressure cooker, I'm not going to worry about my pin bones. They're going to melt away in that whole entire process. You won't even know they're there. But basically what I want to do is this is a little bit off shaped here. So I'll take that one. 
and that skin's tough but we want to leave the skin on there and I'll put it in here now ones I like to do are the half pint jars hopefully you can see this I'm gonna be canning the stuff that I'm keeping in these smaller jars Rob requested the bigger jars so I'm not gonna worry about it but you know I want to make basically what I want to do is I want a piece of fish to fit in here nicely so we're gonna be cutting them about an inch and three quarters somewhere around there make as few simple strokes as possible put it in there now what I did is I put one row in there already and I'm alternating up down and then putting some teriyaki sauce in there so let's get these fish cut up get them in here okay like I said that side's up on those I got our teriyaki over here hopefully I won't spill too much just drizzle that across a couple of ladles worth you get the idea all right I got a lot to do we'll get back with you all right mommies we're here at the smoke shack time to smoke some fish almost we got our fishing bags in here and our brine we got this all cleaned out Ready to go. I'll tell you what, let me get you set up on the tree pit because I need one two hands to do this. All right, there you go. Now, this thing has been acting as our dehydrator most of the summer, getting our mushrooms and our chamomile. We got that all pulled out. We'll be dealing with that later and show you what's going on. Anyway, we are ready to start smoking some fish. Almost. But first, what we got to do is we got to get them out of the brine onto these racks. We're going to set up some fans, and we're going to get some fans blown across across them so it gets a nice crust built up. And then, uh, yeah, we'll do that for a couple, three hours, depending on how long it takes, humidity level. Then we'll get some smoke going. Make some smoked salmon. What do you think? Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Let me get this stuff all put together. I'm going to start with the bottom rack here. And I got these little blocky dudes here that work just fine to keep it from tipping out so I can line my fish up on there. Let's see, you got a decent, decent enough shot? There we go. That's better. All right, let's get these bags up and I'm gonna start putting some fish out. Get this stuff slid in here. Get some fans going. Get the door shut. Get on with this mess. to seal it up. Oh, but you're in the way. All right, I'm gonna get all this mess cleaned up, get this buttoned up nice so no flies or anything get in there. Actually, I got more problems with yellow jackets right now. They sense that meat and they like meat. So, we'll get this buttoned up. Every couple hours we'll come through and maybe move the fans a little bit, check on everything, make sure it's going evenly. And then uh, after that, get the smoke and... Okay, nomers. It's actually been about seven hours because it was fairly cool today. So I felt safe leaving it a little bit longer with the fan going. It's got a nice crust, but let's check it out. Ooh, they're looking good. They are looking good. All right, I got to get these fans out of here because we don't need them no more. Plus, if I left them in there, start a fire, it's going to do bad things. 
And uh, I got to get the fish out of here for a minute because I got two different kinds of wood. I got some dry spruce to get some coals going. And then I've got some fresh, wet cottonwood that's going to go in second. When I start a fire with this, it's going to be smoke that we don't want. Once it burns down to coals, we can put that on top. You'll, you'll see. But uh, until then, we got to get this fish out of here for a minute. All right, I'm going to put you on something and we'll be back. All right, let me show you what we got going on here. We got a pan in the bottom. We got a fire ring. We're going to start our fire in. And uh, this smoker that I built here, the Smook Shack, we got our vents in the top that are adjustable. Places for racks. And then down here, this little door here, I had this set up for cold smoking. Cold smoking, you want your smoke under 90 degrees just to get a smoke flavor. You don't want to cook anything, you just want to get that smoke on there. So basically, I got that this panel in here that's got a hole in it. I put a duct over to this little stovey guy here, and I set him off in the distance. And by the time the smoke comes through the duct and goes in here, it's cold, hence cold smoke. But this is in our way, so I know I made this to come out fairly easy. Can I? There we go. All right. Now we got room to get to our fire. Alright, let's see if we can get a fire going here. Down, we'll throw the green wood on there. Get some smoke action going on way night. Ooh, hot. Just checking our fire here. We should be just about ready. I'm pretty decent. Most of the wood is burned off of it. Got a few pieces. I think it's just about right. Start throwing our cottonwood in. Now this is a tree I just freshly cut yesterday morning. Cut it into pieces. Took all the bark off. Nice and green. We'll make lots of smoke. We'll start with that, see how it does. Alright, set you up on the tree peed. Fish over here. is in. Smoke is starting. I may close these vents off so you can let the smoke build up. We'll see how it goes for now. That's how we regulate our smoke and our temperature. And I'll show you here in a second. After I get this closed up. Hell, oh. Pardon me. Okay. Alright, that's all closed up. We got our vents at the top that I can open and close. And here's our thermometer. We want to be around 150 to about 180 so we can go low and slow because we want lots of smoke and we don't want it to cook too fast. Plus, this stuff's going in the canner to be processed anyway, so it's going to cook again. So we really don't want it to cook too much. Anyway, we'll check back here about a half hour, see where our temperature's at. Keep an eye on our fire. We 
there she goes. Made it up to 150. That took about 15 minutes. And uh, she's smoking pretty good. Stuff some stuff in here because it was leaking a little bit more out the door than I wanted. Yeah, she's doing good. Let's check on the fire. Oh, perfect. Low and slow. This wet stuff is catching. Getting some good smoke going. Once that starts to dry out, it'll turn into coals and I can throw another few wet pieces on there. But this is a process, people. It takes a while. You gotta keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on your temp. Keep an eye on your smoke level. Keep an eye on your fire. And in about two, maybe three hours, depends. We'll be pulling this stuff out of here and having a yummy treat. See that or not, but she is smoking away. Been checking on it about every 15 minutes, making sure our temperature's good. That's been sticking between 150 and 180. Spiked a couple times on me when I turned my back, but that's how it goes. This cotton was perfect because it doesn't burn too hot to begin with, especially when it's wet and it's just been trudging along like that door propped wide open wanted it to heat up I closed it a little bit cool down opened it up a little bit but uh, all right how about we set up the tripod and we see what it looks like on the inside huh, 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 huh. you ready I am holy crap am I ready There we go. Alright. Bad boy up. Let the smoke out. Oh, people. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We're going to let the smoke here clear here for a second. Look at that. Look at that. Can you see it? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. We got a spatula in a bowl here. I'm gonna try and make sure these are loosened up. Might end up just using my hand. Some of them are sticking. Not all of them. Alright. That one's sticking a little bit. Anyway, we'll get all these loose and get them in the bowl. Get inside and give it her a taste. Man, because, oh my. Oh, if you could smell that. Oh! Alright, guys. Here it is. <laughs> Oh, if you could smell that smell. Let's see if we can get you a better look at it here. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. All right, you got to see how moist this stuff is. It's incredible. Look at this. It just falls apart. And we're going to try a piece here. 
Ready? All right, we gotta come back up here now. There we go. Hmm. Gotta be careful. I gotta put this stuff up. Like that is what we're gonna do next. We're gonna bring out the pressure canner, get the jars out, teach you how to preserve this for long-term storage. In the meantime. <laughs> oh, Rob, by the way, I dumped all of yours on the ground. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. All right, it's too late to deal with this stuff tonight. I want it to cool down a little bit anyway. So I'm gonna cover it in foil, get it back in a cool place, and we'll deal with it tomorrow. After I eat a little bit more. Yeah, yeah we'll, take, we'll take this piece right here. All right, Nomies, it's the next day. Time to deal with our fish. Let's see what we got here. Now we put this on ice overnight and I'd munched on it a little bit. Oops, left the skin. I gotta get this put up for two reasons. One, if I don't, I'm gonna eat it all. Two, we want it to last a long time. Here on the Gnomestead, we got no refrigerator, we got no freezer. Well, we do part of the year outside in the snowbank if you count that. Anyway, we want this to last for a long time. We got no fridge, we got no freezer. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna put it in some jaws. All right, so we got this we're gonna deal with. We got our pressure canner over here. Where's that? There's that. Yeah. We got our pressure canner over here. We're gonna get set up. We'll show you how to set that up. Everything we're gonna do. But first of all, I got a bunch of jars I gotta load up. And we're gonna start with this. Okay, first things first. Get that out of the way, get these out of the way. You guesstimate how many jars you're gonna need. With how much fish you got, I'm guesstimating, guesstimating almost two cases. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna get a pan of water here. And since these are brand new jars, we're not gonna sterilize them. Plus, they're going in the pressure canner, which is super high heat, super pressure, so anything that's, yeah, it's gonna kill it. Set that aside. We're gonna take all of our lids off here for the number of jars we think we're gonna need. And we'll get back to you. All right, Nomies, I got my lids over here on the burl. You don't wanna boil these, but you do wanna bring them up to a simmer. Let them sit there for a second, turn the heat off, and then they're good to go. Really what you're doing is you're sanitizing them a little bit and you're softening the lids so they seal good. All right, we got our jars set up here. We think this is gonna be enough. First thing I wanna do is I wanna try and see if I can get these in here with some skin sticking out. that skin is good for you yeah that might not look too bad so we're gonna play around with these here a little bit we might have to trim some up but we got all these jars to fill up some big ones to fill up and then we'll get to pressure cannon okay normally nomenclatures we got all of our little jars filled up and uh, before we put the lids on here and get them in the pressure canner, I want to add a little bit extra of what I had left over from our teriyaki that we made and brined it in. Just put a little bit in each one and a little bit of extra flavor. Now that that's done, we got our lids nice and hot, ready to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here, which is some water and vinegar, two parts water, one part vinegar, and I'm going to take these and I'll wipe down these rims really good. Just like that. 
And then, it's easier. <laughs> we got a little magnet, do we? Go like that. Put your lid on, nice and snug. Not too tight. All right, one more time. Vinegar and water. Wipe down your rim. Grab your lid. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna get these all put up because I've got a few more jars I gotta fill up with some other fish we got in a different bowl. So let me tell you this. Get it in the canner. Oh, real quick, one thing. Don't fill up your jars too much. Try and keep it below this right here. Best you can. Voila! All right, we got those taken care of. Get these set aside. I wanna put, get these filled up and put these in the bottom of the canner because they're bigger jars. I don't like big stuff sitting on top of little stuff. It's, you know, it, it's still gonna work, but I, I anyway, that's the way I wanna do it, all right, guys? Right. Give me a minute, we'll reorganize. Get back to you. All right, nobody sees the situation. We gotta get to all these into here yeah all those into there hmm all right let's get this lid off of here wow get your situated in there we got our first silicon ring let's see there we go okay I got about an inch, inch and a half of water. Actually, I got an inch of water in there. I might want to put a little bit more. Yes, more water. There. Okay, I got about an inch of water in there. Next thing I want to do is put some white vinegar in here. Just a splash. If you don't do that, your jars are going to get all hazy and discolored and everything. You can clean it all off, but if you put a splash of vinegar in there, this is one less thing you got to clean off. All right, load it up. We're going to start with the big ones on the bottoms. Probably have to space these out because we only got five big ones. I'm hoping we can get two rows. We got four left. I do some movie rearranging. All right, those are ready to go. Let's put the lid on. Now this is an American canner. Um, all American is what they call it. Yeah, right there, all American. It does not have a seal. No gasket. We like it that way. Nice and heavy duty. Oh, in fact, that's killing my arm doing that. But anyway, one thing you gotta remember with these is you always wanna line up your line, seat it in the same spot every time. Make sure your spacing is even all the way around. And when you put these on, these little doohickey mobbers here, loosen them up real good. There we go. And uh, when you're putting these on here, make sure you're tightening them crisscross from each other. All around even. There we go. One more. Okay, make sure our gap is all even. Start tightening these down. Finger tight, that's all you need to do. Nothing <laughs> super crazy. Crisscross from each other, just like that. Okay, okay. 
keep an eye on it it's gonna take a while but you want to get ahead of steam coming out of your little doohickey mabobber there and that little doohickey mabobber there is the, the weight uh oh we're gonna do with the weight it's got to be here somewhere oh there it is Whew. never lose this you're uh, out of luck if you do but uh, once we get a head of steam coming out of there, we're going to put this on the number 10 right there. 10 pounds. I don't know if you can see it or not. But uh, yeah, hurry up and wait. Then once it cools all the way down, we'll do another batch. Okay, guys, this thing has come up to temperature. It's been steaming for about 10 minutes. It's hard to see. But if I put a glass over it, you can see all that steam building up. It's been doing that steady for about 10 minutes. That means all of the air is extracted out of there. And it's time to put our poundage on there. Put it on the 10. Keep an eye on the gauge. Once this gets up to 10, that thing's going to start going rattle. Da, 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 da. Once that starts happening, set your timer for 90 minutes. Okay guys, we are sitting at like 11 pounds, hopefully that's not blurry. Steam's starting to pop out of that. This thing will start going ratty tat tat if it gets too much pressure. And uh, yeah, we're golden, so start our timer. 90 minutes, hour and a half. There she blows! Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Eating good in the gnome hood. Until next time. Never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Put your comment down on the bottom. Click the subscribe down on the bottom. Click the like button. Down on the bottom. Or make a comment. Down on the bottom. Peace out.